Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Coach Bronson here, your no-carb athlete, and this is week 18. I'm going into 4, uh, 8, 12, 16, going into five months, right? 20 weeks, almost almost five months in. Uh, yes, I had to do math. My brain is crazy right now. I have so many things going on. I don't even know what I'm going to be talking about in this video, but let's get into it. Anyways, we're going to be talking about... Um, my update on body composition. We're going to talk a little bit about some changes that I've made in my fitness routine and how that applies to being 50 years old and exercising and trying to figure out how to manage all that. Is it too much? Am I doing too much is the question. Uh, and the reason, one of the reasons we ask that is because my body composition from a muscle gain perspective, I'm pretty much the same. Um, three weeks ago, I was at 95 pounds this morning when I weighed got on the scales at 94.4. So it's gone down half a pound. Oh my God, end of the world. Not totally surprising because I've made some changes. I am, we'll talk about what those changes are in a minute. I'm not doing as much lifting. I'm kind of cutting back on the lifting, trying to change. I'm testing out some things on the lifting side and I'm adding in some additional activities. But overall, let's look at my numbers. So three weeks ago, my numbers were... 184 pounds and 0.8, I'm at 183.9. So I've lost about a pound overall. And half a pound of that has been fat and half a pound of that has been muscle. So I've lost about a pound together of fat and muscle. Um, I'm at 19.2 pounds of body fat, which is body fat mass, 0.2 pounds less body fat than when I started this whole process. So even though I'm lower in, in, in muscle mass than last week, even though I'm lower in fat than last week, and my overall weight has gone down, and the idea that I want, I'm trying to maintain or gain weight technically, because if I maintain my muscle mass at the same level of body fat in pounds, as I add muscle, sorry, my total mass, as I, if I keep my body fat where it is at about 19 pounds, then if I add muscle, my overall weight will go up. That's what we're looking for. Um, my weight actually went down. Oh my gosh, I lost a little fat, I lost a little muscle. But if we look at the last four and a half months, okay, the last four and a half months, I started this whole thing at 178 pounds, 0. 0.6, 178 and a half pounds. I'm currently 183.9, so almost 184 pounds. Okay, so I've put on uh, quick math, nine, nine pounds, something like that. No, seven pounds, six pounds, six pounds. Okay. Six pounds of muscle or of weight. I've gained six total pounds. Um, okay. So, and that's, remember that's as you ain't, you gain muscle mass, you're going to gain some weight in muscle mass, but you also gain some in, in fluids, um, skin, like the, the other things go. So your lean mass altogether is going to increase as your muscle mass increases. It's not linear necessarily. If I gain five pounds of muscle, I may gain five and a half or six pounds in total weight because there's other things that go into that as well. All right. Um, so let's look at that. So I've gained six pounds total. I put on three and a half, almost four pounds of skeletal muscle mass, just purely muscle fiber. I will maintain I'm at... My body fat went up 0.2 pounds. So I started this process almost five months ago at 19 pounds of body fat. I currently have 19.2 pounds of body fat. Okay. That's pretty non-significant, non, non insignificant, whichever one of those that were, that is. Um, but almost four pounds of muscle being added with basically no body fat being added. Okay. So again, we talk about the difference in the need to understand calories in, calories out, how it's not really that. It's functional calories versus fuel calories. Um, if you saw the post, the study that I posted on Facebook uh, a couple of days ago, uh, today is the third. So I think I posted it on the first or the second of September, 2022, if you want a date reference in this video. Uh, on my, my the Ultimate Ketogenic Fitness Facebook page, there was a study, I think it was from 2016, where they did a, random controlled study. They took a bunch of people, they gave some of them no additional protein, some of them like 1.2 uh, grams per kilogram, 
and they gave some of them uh, like 2.5 or something like a, a crazy uh, higher number of protein while at the same time reducing their total caloric intake to less than what they were previously doing. Um, so they were in a deficit, a total caloric deficit with a higher level of protein and the amount of muscle that was gained in the eight week time frame was correspondent to the amount of extra protein they got. They did exercise programs. They all did the same workouts for the eight weeks, et cetera. Those people that got the most protein with their exercise gained the most muscle. Those people that got no additional protein gained the least muscle. They all gained muscle though without being in a caloric surplus. Something to think about. Okay. Um, let's see. Body fat percentage has gone down. Okay. Because I've gained muscle. So I started this process at 10.6%. I'm currently at 10.4%. So I, my body fat has basically stayed the same and I've gained muscle. So my body fat percentage is lower. All right. So that's how things are going. Now, um, am I happy with that? Absolutely. Cause I'm showing that over, over time, it is possible to build muscle without gaining fat and doing it without eating carbs. Remember I'm under 10 grams of carbs per day for the past four, almost five months. Okay. It's actually been longer than that. Cause if we count the seven months previous, definitely under, I was almost, I was averaging five or less, I think, or close to five or less for the seven months prior to that. So I don't eat carbs guys and being able to build muscle, maintain my body fat percentage, maintain my body fat mass at the same time is very telling. I don't have any energy with issues, or any, any issues with, I don't have any energy with issues. Yeah. I don't have any issues with energy. I don't have any issues being hangry, getting hungry, having bonks, crashes of energy. My workouts, I get pumped in my workouts. Uh, I have a blast. They feel good. Uh, and I've even gotten to the point where my recovery is so good. So if you remember a couple months ago, I started changing, trying to focus specifically on building muscle. So I went to more of a powerlifting type program. I did that for a while. I think I, I, I almost did a, did a full 12 months. So I have a 12 month lean gains strength program that you can go on my website, go to coaching. You can, you can sign up for it and get it there. It'll go right to your phone. There's an app you can download. You get the 12 week program that I do. It's I designed it and it's the program that I personally do when I want to work on specifically trying to get stronger and build mass and start seeing some numbers improve in my major lifts and all that stuff. That's the program that I always start with. 12 weeks, knock it out. Um, because of some other changes I did, I actually finished that a little early. So I didn't get the full 12 weeks. I think I finished at like week 10 or week nine um, because I'm adding in um, something that has been on my to-do list for several years since I stopped doing it. And I decided to finally pull the trigger and I signed up for a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu school and I'm going to be going three days a week. So if you don't know my history, I used to be an army combatives instructor. I did that for three years, got introduced to mixed martial arts, MMA, all that kind of stuff. Had a blast. Absolutely loved it. Had some neck issues prior to getting into CrossFit, getting into fitness, fixing my nutrition, all that kind of stuff. And basically had to kind of stop. Um, I had uh, herniated discs in my neck. I had pain radiating down my arm. I had all kinds of issues um, with things that just weren't working. Fast forward to now, being a uh, starting CrossFit is really what started my journey to fix my neck issues, learning how to move my body, getting my neck strong, getting my shoulders strong, getting my back strong, working on my overall strength. All those things started fixing those problems. Um, I don't have neck. I used to not be able to sleep. I used to have to sleep with a special pillow, couldn't sleep on my side, like all sorts of issues. So working through that, working through my labral tears, I have torn, torn labrums in both of my shoulders working through a meniscus tear in my left leg and my left knee. So I have a lot of things that kind of just built up and I had to stop the, the BJJ for a while, um, a while. So the last time I did it was like 2009. Okay. So it's been 13 years. Uh, and I really, really, really missed it. I wanted to get back to it. So I pulled the trigger, decided to do it. So started, started doing that, uh, about a week ago and realized that there is no way in hell that I'm going to be able to sustain doing three days of BJJ and five days of weight training. It's just not going to happen. Okay. I may be able to work into something that's a little bit more that has more of the strength training in there, but BJJ is intense. If you guys don't know 
Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and what those classes are like. They're fairly high intensity. There's a lot of speed, power, flexibility. There's a lot of components that you have to you, you work and you come out of there and you are exhausted. Um, and I love that. That's one of the things I love about it. It's great conditioning. It's great metabolic conditioning. It's great muscle conditioning. It's great movement conditioning. You have to understand how the body moves. All sorts of things I love about BJJ. Um, my strength program, if you do sign up for the 12-week lean gains program that I have on my website, you'll see that there's strength work, max effort work. There's general physical preparedness work, general physical conditioning, and there's dynamic speed and power work. All of those things help general functional fitness. They help general strength, but they really, if you put them together properly, they are the best way to activate and get a high volume of work in in a week without overtraining. Okay, because you can mix up the stimulus and mix up all the different things that you're doing and still get five days a weekend, but not feel like you're getting beat up because you're there's enough variation between strength work and power work and speed work and interval work and movement work and flexibility and stability and all that stuff is mixed in there okay now because i had all that stuff in my normal program um when i move into bjj a lot of that stuff parallels the activity that you get when you're training so when you're doing brazilian jiu-jitsu training you're getting some power dynamics flexibility mobility you're getting some of that training you're getting plenty of core work there's a lot of stuff that that the BJJ training is replacing from the weight or resistance or weightlifting training that I was doing. So I don't need to do it twice. I don't need to do both. Okay. So that means what I have left from my strength training is going to be more complementary because now my goal is not just aesthetic. My goal is not just, I want to get more lean mass. My goal is I want to get more lean mass. Yes but I also want to make sure that I can perform well and be strong and do well in BJJ. I have a, now I have an activity that I can apply my physicality to, and that's going to shift my goals a little bit. So I want to get better at BJJ. That's central nervous system. That's knowledge, experience, execution, all those things, understanding situations, feeling your body, feeling the other person's body, responding to different actions and reactions and all that kind of stuff. That's, most of that right now for me is mental work that I need to put into it, okay? Yes, I'm still getting power. Yes, I'm still getting dynamic movement, all those types of things because I'm still moving my body. But there's a lot of mental stuff going on. The things that's missing from BJJ is the strength work, is the hypertrophy from both sarcoplasmic and myofibular, okay? So building size and building strength is not something that BJJ is really meant to do. It's just not. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm going to the BJJ class three days a week. So I'm going to get three, uh, depending on how long the class is, it's about an hour, hour and 15 minutes or so. So I'm getting three to five, let's just say three to five hours of BJJ a week. Okay, and then I'm going to be doing two sessions. Okay, so I, I designed an eight week program that is two split sessions. It's a upper, lower split, lower, upper split, however you want to look at it. That's designed for two workouts a week, period. It is solely focused on maintaining and building muscle. That is it. It is a strength hypertrophy program. It is not designed to do all your upper body and all your lower body in two days, 45 minutes to an hour for each one. You get in, you knock it out, you get a crazy pump, you move a ton of weight, you work heavy. It is max effort work in different ways. Okay. Some of it is max effort heavy. Some of it is max effort and just max as many reps as you possibly can do. So we'll, you can see how that works if you, if you sign up for it. Um, that is also available, by the way. That is also available on my website. If you go check that out, it is the eight-week complementary strength program because it's designed for people who have an activity but want to include some full body strength maintenance and lean mass maintenance into their program without detracting from the other training that they're doing. Okay. So for me, for instance, I am now back into BJJ. I train BJJ three to five hours a week. I still need to work on strength. I don't want to lose my strength. I don't want to lose my lean mass. So I'm going to do a two day a week strength training program. That's going to help me maintain potentially build. If I do it right, potentially build. There's some techniques in there that I've included that are based off of, if you've ever looked at high intensity training, 
different than high intensity interval training that is designed to maximize muscle growth in the shortest amount of time. I put some some of those principles into this program. Um, if you're not familiar with that, look up um, Doug McGruff, I believe. Look up Body by Science. Look up Arthur Jones. There's a lot of information about some of the best ways to build muscle and grow, uh, build strength and grow muscle. And that's some of the stuff I put in here. So uh, that's what this is. So that's the change that I'm making. I'm going to be doing some kind of physical activity five days a week. Uh, and because I've been doing that on the strength side, I'm easing into it. So the first week I did like one class, took a bunch of days off. Next time I did one class, took a couple of days off, taking this weekend off. I'm going to hit it Monday. So Monday I'm going, Tuesday I'm going. Wednesday I'm going to do a lower body, my lower body strength split. Thursday I'm going to class. And then Friday I do my upper body uh, strength split. And then Saturday and Sunday are my rest days. Okay, that's when I t go with Coach Nat. We go for a walk or a walk around the lake, something like that. Kind of chill out. Um, so that's the changes. We're going to see the, in, the, the thing that's going to be interesting now, right, is I've gained four pounds of skeletal muscle in the last four and a half months. We're going to see way, way more metabolic conditioning work is going to be happening. We're going to see how that affects my muscle gain. I'm still doing 200 grams of protein plus per day. I'm still keeping my fat at about 135. That's my current number. 135 fat, 200 protein is the current number um, and see how that goes. If because I'm doing a lot more um, intense activity with BJJ three days a week, my overall caloric requirement may go up. So I may see a huge drop in body fat over the next couple of weeks. We'll see how that goes. I may want to up my fat again because it's going to change. My activity level throughout the day is going to change my maximum energy threshold. If I'm more active, I utilize more energy, then my fuel calories may need to go up so that I can maintain without getting too lean. Okay. I like being around 10%. Um, it'd be cool to see what I look like and how I feel at about 8%. If I could get to 8%, that'd be kind of cool, but I don't need to be there. I, mean, I feel great at 10%. Um, it's kind of cool. So we'll see how that goes. That's what's going on with me, guys. I don't want to just drag it on too long, but um, being 50 years old, having a lot of previous injuries and understanding what it means to take things easy, to ease into new types of, of, of exercising and pro dance programs and understand that your maximum recovery volume, the amount of work that you're doing is going to determine how long you need to recover. The type of work that you're doing is going to determine how long you need to recover. Okay. If you take that time to recover and do it properly, as your body gets better at doing the activity, it will get better at the recovery. The recovery time will go down. You can start putting on more volume and test that. Okay, if I add this, does it mess up my recovery? No. Okay, great. Let's maintain that for a while, get my recovery good here. Maybe I can add a little bit more. So don't jump in to a new program and do it five days a week. Jump into a new program, start with one or two days, work through it, take a little bit longer on the recovery time, focus on movement, recovery activities, Okay, rolling out, stretching, take cold showers, get more sleep, eat more protein. Okay, make sure you're getting good electrolytes, all those things. And then as your body gets better at recovering, you can increase the volume of the work that you're doing. You can increase the intensity of the work that you're doing. And then they kind of work off each other. Okay, so it doesn't really matter how old you are, guys. Eat, recovery is trainable. You can train your body to recover better and recover faster and increase your volume. There is nothing saying that because you're 50 years old, you can't train three or four or five days a week. Okay. Now, without getting too much into this, do you need to be training three or four or five days a week? That's a whole different question. That's a topic for another video. Your training program and the amount of time you put into your training should match your goal and the lifestyle you're trying to live. Don't just train because you think you need to. Whole different, whole different discussion, guys. All right. Maybe we'll talk about that next week. If not, um, some other video I do somewhere on this channel, we'll probably talk about that soon. All right. Take it easy, guys. See you in a couple weeks.